Hi, I'm Steve Casely from CBT Nuggets and welcome to this nugget on vendor management. Making sure that the IT department is doing a good, thorough, complete job of managing all of the vendors from inception, from I have initial requirement, all the way to selection and implementation of all of the IT vendor solutions. But focusing on the fact that we've already covered significant aspects of vendor management in earlier nuggets, I'm going to refer you back to the appropriate nuggets and only focus on the net new expectations of the CISA exam in this segment. So requirements we did in the immediate prior nugget. So if you want any more details than that, please go back and re-review the nugget immediately prior to this. I will also refer you back to nugget 37, which is IT vendor management, to get more details on the actual process for selecting the vendor, doing your selection grid, doing your evaluation matrix, and ensuring that you're following a very defined and thorough vendor selection process. The rest of this I am going to talk about in a little detail in this nugget. And I'm going to start off with the R soup that I mentioned in the requirements nugget immediately prior to this. We will often go through multiple levels of R's and R's means requests as we're going through and selecting this expensive IT hardware and we will often start off with the RFI which is a request for information. This is the difference between the draft requirements that we mentioned in the last nugget and the final requirements. We think we know exactly what we want but we want to do the confirmation. But we don't want to get that confirmation in a legally binding sense. So we go out to the vendor community and we issue an RFI, request for information that basically says, here's my draft requirements. You tell me how you can solve my draft requirements. We're going to take all of those RFI responses we're going to evaluate them against our requirements. We're going to modify our requirements a little bit. That's why we move from draft to final. And then we're ready to go out and do the formal selection. And we're going to issue an RFP, a request for proposal. And at this point in time, we are now getting to that financially binding state. Most organizations have words in an RFI, and this is going to come from legal, that basically says do not construe this RFI as a commitment to purchase. This is simply a request for information, but typically in an RFP, the words are out there that this is notice of our formal intentions to purchase, assuming we get valid responses, someone is going to win this. And, and, and that is a, a level of assurance that most vendors need to put the level of effort into producing the details for an RFP. And then I'd have our question mark, question mark, because many, many organizations have their own subtle variations on this. We have requests for quotation. We have information requests. We have, we have, we have. But pro bottom line is principally we work through this process at a, I need information level and I need a proposal level. Then we go through the vendor selection process as discussed in Nugget 37. And then we go into contract negotiation. Contract negotiations typically involve legal. If you have a legal department internal to your organization, you're going to use those. But if not, if this is any degree of a significant procurement, I would highly recommend that you ensure legal has been involved from an external counsel and we need to have procurement engaged again from an organization to make sure we're following the procurement practices of the organization. 
There's a third aspect to contract negotiation that I want to call out, and that is requirements refinement. In spite of how diligent your RFI is going to be to really get the details of what you want and how rigorous your RFP, where you've got the final requirements defined, and how rigorous your vendor selection with your evaluation matrix is going to be, my experience is there will be a degree of requirements refinement that's going to take place in that last step of contract negotiation. And therefore, we need to make sure that we have refined our requirements to be exactly what is stated in the contract. And I'm deliberately using the word refinement because it shouldn't be a significant change, but we're going to eventually be testing this we're going to put all of this into the requirements traceability matrix that we will discuss in the next nugget, but we need to make sure we absolutely are aware of all these refinements so that we can properly test it and go forward. So there needs to be significant involvement from IT in contract negotiations. The point is, it's not just legal and procurement. The project needs to be there as well. And then other considerations, depending on exactly what you're purchasing, it's very common for an organization to request escrow code, obviously with software more so than hardware, so that should the vendor become insolvent, should the vendor be acquired by another organization and drop support for the software that you're using, you have some degree of assurances that you will be able to continue to use this on a go-forward basis. And all vendor management should be very concerned about support and warranty so that we have that assurance that this environment, this hardware, this software, this middleware is going to be supported in the long term in our organization. And that concludes this discussion on vendor management. I hope this nugget has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.